Hello, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about this confusion that I hear a lot in terms of certain habits, especially when it concerns plants and therefore addictions with certain substances, and really discuss the appropriate shamanic perspective that brings in some aspect of logic and the scientific thinking. Therefore, our whole pharmaceutical companies and health system is based on plant knowledge, which goes back thousands and thousands of years, as long as the humans have existed, basically. And this plant interaction with humans is really important, even though the pharmaceutical industry has basically patented the process of extracting the compounds within the plants, which actually makes it not as effective. Also, it doesn't basically have the whole entourage effect and the whole frequency of the medicine, and in some cases makes it even toxic, where because it doesn't have the entourage effects, just the compound is actually toxic for our bodies. But that's a whole entire other podcast. In this edition, we're going to talk about addictions and what they are, and the addictions to substances, and the actual use of it. I heard Sadhguru say something about a question about smoking tobacco and how the person was addicted to it and was asking Sadhguru, and Sadhguru just kind of let the person talk, and so the person said, you know, it, it's a bad habit. And he said, no, it's not a bad habit or a good habit, it's just a stupid one, because it doesn't basically elevate your performance, it hinders your performance, and therefore, why would you want to be hindered? And that's a very interesting and correct way of avoiding the subject to me, because you're not really getting into the individualization of each plant, and therefore the relationship that each plant actually has on our bodies, which includes the physical, but also the emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, and causal body. So it's quite a, an amazing subject to get into. Because on the shamanic level, we see things from the earth, such as plants or crystals, rocks, trees, you know, everything that is from this cosmos has a certain frequency, a certain energy, vibration, constitution, or an essence, basically, that resonates with a certain amount of consciousness. And I, th I know it's very hard for some very logical-minded and educated people to understand that there's a spirit, in a way, in some of these inanimate objects that we kind of take for granted. But actually, there is a spirit in all things. This is old indigenous, you know, common knowledge in a way. And it's part of our ancestry. It's part of how the world works. And this physical plane actually, you know, and our body are the same. We're one, we're not separate. So we need things from this plane. And mostly at the essence, we're looking for metals to nourish us and give us consistency, like our body. And yet we can't digest metals in this organic form of higher consciousness, this star-like, form that makes us conscious beings with a certain elevation. And today, the human being is bridging this nine-centered consciousness being, which we're still calling the human, even though as we're playing with frequencies and raising the Earth's frequencies by playing with the frequencies, which is all part of the program of how this organic Earth actually is also lifting its frequencies, and therefore all species 
that need to basically raise their frequencies are coming in, you know, coordinates into harmony, into interaction that creates harmony. And so when you see the plants, the shamanic plants like psilocybin, marijuana, tobacco, sage, you know, ayahuasca, San Pedro or Huachuma have basically bloomed in the last, let's say, 20 years since the beginning of 2000 after the chip and the bug of 2000 went away and the end of the world didn't end. Just like the shamanic 2012 didn't finish the world, the world is continuing. And, there, and there's several thousand years of evolution to bring this human form to another level. And so to bring this human form to another level, there's many things that are happening. There's a genetic, you know, mutation that's actually happening, which I keep referring to as the birthing through maybe over a hundred years of kids that we took as being sick or demented or something to be fixed. That was the autistic kids, which have now shown to be, you know, quite brilliant, if not have evolved to the Asperger's and to these new kind of ADD kids that are on a whole other level with the advancements of technology and education, and this, that, and the other. But, you know, as the earth is moving in frequency, the human form is moving in frequency. And inside of our bodies, energetic bodies, because we are basically all energy, you know, and we have to get out of the Newtonian physics of things that are material when we're in the quantum physics, which basically says that everything is energetic and in multi dimensions at once. And there's forces connecting that that goes faster than light, right? So there's information fields and we're living in a field with all sorts of different potential realities, 16 that are interacting at all times, right? It's getting quite spiritual material, the material plane. And yet all these different plants have a certain conscious frequency, as I was saying, including rocks, including, you know, gemstones and things of that nature that help us shift into different conscious awarenesses. And sometimes they are used to balance or rebalance things that we've kind of screwed up through different flawed thinking, flawed information that we received as kids, either through the culture or through some book or media teacher, parent, child, you know, like so many different ways of getting misinformation. And today that's something that our bodies are really stressed out on is the amount of information that we receive is incredible. It's made us really, you know, elevate to a new awareness field of information. And so our brain is, is trying to comprehend the amount of information that it's receiving. Meanwhile, our body, our gut, and our heart, and our bodies are actually hyperly tuned to feel so much more. And, you know, there's this incredible receptive field that we're not really educated in connecting to, which is actually where our consciousness becomes much more aware to this quantum level, to this quantum field and electromagnetic field that is what we're plugged into that is what makes us one with everything and connected to all things and interconnected. And therefore, back to the plants, when you have an addiction to a plant, it's because there's an exchange of energy that's going on that's beneficial. And in a way, if a plant is a spirit and it is a consciousness, it has helped you along your path of evolving into what you are now. And that needs to be acknowledged. And there's got to be a celebration. There's got to be a certain understanding. There's got to be a conscious awareness. 
and an energetic counterpart that needs to be dealt with in order to liberate yourself from that habit, which is a habit because of a certain need, which the plant, you know, played like a crutch or as a doorway to some of these plants, you know, to new awareness fields, because some of these plants can get us to higher states of consciousness. So unlike what Sadhguru was saying, that they only bring us down in awareness fields and consciousness, I disagree. I think there are certain plants that develop certain chemicals that we have, and then somehow our body closes down to, that reawakens that connection to bring us to heightened states of awareness to help us and remind us of the divine and how incredibly deep and profound it is. And even we call them plant teachers because they teach us. They really teach us things about our own subconscious, about our own interpersonal life that a guru cannot, right? And in understanding that conscious of a plant that's also trying to survive and therefore communicating and making itself relevant to the human so that the human starts paying attention to it and cultivating it and taking, you know, interest in it, which it starts becoming a ritualized, habitualized, you know, use. Therefore it's farmed and it's changed and it's evolved and it's played with is, is the whole thing about nature. It's the interdependent dance of creating certain value of information, you know, and connection to bring us into that awareness field of this quantum field, of this massive electromagnetic field of frequencies that we live in and that we partake in, in vibrating. You know, I always see this image of like whales that are like floating in the ocean this incredible, beautiful being that just vibrates and sings to bring harmony, literally, into the waters, you know, and to rebring a certain awareness field with these frequencies. That's basically what we're here to do, right? And that's what we're doing. So besides our need of air, first, water, second, food, third, love of ourselves, fourth, and then our creative force that usually will attract, you know, the social group to us in a positive way where we're actually functioning from that. And then we have our excretion, which if we can like somehow beautify as we deal with this duality of bringing light into the darkness, therefore lifting matter, through energy, right? Through this pumping heart that is making us alive, which trees have, which plants have, which rocks have, this pulse of life, which when you're an inanimate object, right? And you have this one vital center, you're still connected to that pulse of life. And so as you get more complex, like as a plant and then as insects, and as you go up the chain, we're actually, bringing metals, because like the rocks and the crystallization is through metals, which basically creates minerals from the air and the earth and the waters that interact with the metals that creates these minerals that goes up and gets taken by the plants, which is what defines the plant's consciousness and conscious perception of this reality, basically. And they start in a collective way evolving to carrying certain base frequencies that we're all connected to. And so when you use different plants, there's a reason. And understanding that reason is very important in order to actually quit a plant. You know, whether it's bread and wheat, whether it's tobacco, whether it's opiates, you know, the poppy seeds, and all of that. It's, they're all plants. All the medicines are plants. And, and the poison or the healing component is really based on dose and usage. And to understand the usage, you got to understand the conscious peace that's basically being held 
you know, by the plant. And when you understand that relationship and how it works within your subconscious archetypes, how it works within your genetic code, how it works within your history of cultural epigenetics that have brought upon your being right now, right? Then you can start honoring those relationships before just quitting them and putting a moral judgment of they're toxic or negative. What's really negative is the judgment we put on these relationships and especially other people that put other judgments on other people and their relationships to these plants. You know, that's a catastrophe because that's actually also a frequency that's being sent out, this mental energy of judgment, which is very twisted, right? And yet we do because we are meant to judge which frequencies we need at each moment, meaning like how to gather plants, fruits, roots, our minerals, our metals, which animals to go hunt where, when, and how to cultivate that into food so that we can dance, sing, and make love, be in love, express our love. So I think it's a little bit more complicated than just saying it's a stupid thing to smoke tobacco, for example, when actually it's a plant that's really helped us, you know, come into certain initiations of psychic awareness, communication with other plants, and that has helped a lot of people deal with grief and sadness. I mean, the lungs is very much all about that. and. You know, when you see where tobacco was used, it was also very often in war, you know, because it helped relieve some of that grief. So if we could understand the grieving that's been going on on the planet because of this use of tobacco, which is probably one of the plants that we've used tremendously. We have an incredible connection on a human level to the consciousness of this plant, just like cannabis, right? And, and others, you know, like, I mean, it's just incredible what we build our houses with. For example, these trees, oak, and uh, really realizing what that is all about, self-sustenance, right? And having a certain rigid patriarchal kind of structure and strength. And yet there is a certain, you know, clan of oaks usually. So it's quite interesting because it is about building the family. So, you know, each plant, each element in nature is a frequency of understanding and of consciousness. And if your body has had a deep connection and history with a certain plant, tobacco or whatnot, you know, it's beautiful to cultivate understanding before you can just cut it out and honoring with deep gratitude the service that that plan has given and exchanging the relationship through honoring it in other ways. You know, if you have an altar or a little prayer place, you know, having a little bit of tobacco as your sacred plant might be a way that you can quit with that tobacco as you might want to do a private ceremony of thanking, you know, and asking the tobacco to cut this relationship and then review your relationship. What has it brought you? What has it given you? You know, where are all the pleasures? And having that nostalgia as you bring up the emotions of the relationship, you know, that you're about to shift and transform and not quit. Because, you know, we don't like quitters. So, there's my thoughts about addiction and consciousness and plants. I think we touched upon a lot of different things on how things work, especially the quantum and the uh, energetic field that we're really playing with. And so hopefully that was entertaining and probably will spur many new episodes. I look forward to it. I hope you're enjoying yourself. And thanks for listening. I always appreciate it.